supporting part two. Rob, would you lead us in the third step prayer, please? Of course, it'd be my pleasure. Rob K., recovered alcoholic, the third step prayer, which is on page 63 of your big book. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those that would help with thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. Thank you, Rob. Okay, we are into action, uh, the chapter, and we left off at a little bit more than the halfway mark on page 74 today, so we'll be, be there. Um, what we'll do is, as we uh, have started doing, um, is go back up a paragraph above, and then uh, we will get started uh, from there, moving into what we uh, are going to be covering today. So, Rob, okay, everybody, we're on page 74. If you want to turn to your big book. Morning, Joanna. If we cannot or would or would rather not do this, we search our acquaintance for a closed mouth, understanding friend. Perhaps our doctor or psychologist will be the person. It may be one of our own family, but we cannot disclose anything to our wives or our parents, which would hurt them or make them unhappy. We have no right to save our own skin at another person's expense. Such parts of our story we tell to someone who will understand, yet be unaffected. The rule is we must be hard on ourselves but always consider it of others. Okay, the important thing here is to find somebody that is uh, going to be in, uh, treat this with confidence uh, or be in confidence. That's kind of what we're talking about here with the closed mouth um, uh, person. So uh, usually it's gonna be your sponsor. Uh, this was back before we had sponsors when this was written. So uh, the idea being is, is that a uh, sponsor is always gonna be a good idea because they have already been through the same things that you have been through. And more than likely they, they have been through even more than what you've been through uh, in some cases. Uh, but in, in all of those cases, they understand what it means to be the person that is receiving um, the, uh, the fifth step, which is what we're talking about right now. Um, the other thing about this is, is important is, is that uh, uh, it's never a good idea to, uh, to choose a wife or a parent or somebody that's going to more than likely be hurt by some of the things that you're going to uh, disclose to someone. Uh, I know of uh, only one person that I've ever heard of that decided to share it with their wife and it didn't go as well as they wanted it to. So um, even the person that had the, the warning chose to do it and uh, unfortunately it didn't go, go that well. Um, lastly, uh, with regard to this particular paragraph, it's a, a warning here at the bottom. Uh, we have no right to save our own skin at another person's expense. Such parts of our story we tell to someone who will understand yet be unaffected. The rule is we must be hard on ourselves, but always considerate of others. So um, big, big kind of uh, thing to think about here is that you want to be very critical and, um, and hard on yourself and uh, um, and always consider it of, of others. Uh, this is about you and, and not about someone else. So, um, okay, with that, let's uh, have you take over again there, Rob. Okay, sounds great. And and Leo, thank you for, for highlighting that the rule is we must be hard on ourselves. It's our new way of thinking. You know, before we could care less about other people. We were selfish and self-centered to the extreme. Now we ask God what we should do in different situations. And now we are considerate of other people's feelings. Notwithstanding the great necessity for discussing yourself with someone, and maybe one is so situated that there is no suitable person available. If that is so, this step may be postponed. Only, however, if we hold ourselves in complete readiness to go through with that at the first opportunity. We say this because we are very anxious that we talk to the right person. 
It is important that he be able to keep a confidence that he fully understand and approve what we're driving at, that he will not try to change our plan, but we must not use this as a mere excuse to postpone. All right. So again, this is a this is a, 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 a particular situation where when this book was written, some people were getting this book and they were they they had nobody but family around them at the time uh, and didn't have anybody to share this with. We're going through the uh, uh, recovery program outlined in the book on their own and just didn't have anybody to share with. So that's one of the things that I think is kind of a distinction about this. The idea still holds true, okay, but it's a cautionary tale with regard to postponing this step. What basically they're saying is, is if you are not, if you don't have anybody that you can share with, and again, at this point, you should have a, a good sponsor that's supporting you through this, this, this process. Um, and in all cases, that sponsor should understand, should know, and should be available and uh, ready to, uh, to listen to what you have to say. Um, so I, I doubt that most people are going to be in a situation, um, even more than nine out of 10 people are going to have somebody that they can share with in, in today. Now, couple of things. It is important to be able to keep a confidence that he fully understand and approve what we are driving at, that he will not try to change our plan. I highlighted this area and I wrote a note to myself, and this is something that's important. You need to be able to tell the person that you're telling your fifth step to that their job is not to try and fix you. You're not, they're not there to try and fix you, okay? They're just there to receive um, your story so that you can get something uh, off and out into the open. Um, so, um, and, and, and why is all of this important? So first of all, we admitted to God uh, uh, to this, this information for forgiveness. We admitted to ourselves for awareness and we admitted to someone else for humility. So I'll say that again, uh, why this is important, this step into itself is that first, we admitted to God for forgiveness. Uh, second, we admitted to ourselves for awareness. And third, we admitted this to someone else for humility. Okay, um, lastly, is that if you are in a situation where you're postponing this step, it is not uh, just because uh, you have don't have somebody that's really not uh, use this as a mis uh, this idea of being able to postpone this just as an excuse to postpone it. So, for postponing sake, it's not a good idea, and it's not uh, part of the program that is being prescribed to do so. Rob. We're on page 75, everybody, right at the top. When we decide who is to hear our story, we waste no time. We have written in, we have a written inventory and we are prepared for a long talk. We explain to our partner what we are about to do and why we have to do it. He should realize that we are engaged upon a life and death errand. Most people approached in this way will be glad to help. They will be honored by our confidence. Right, and, and a couple of things here in this is that once, uh, when we decide who it is that we're going to hear our story, in most cases, again, is going to be your sponsor. We waste no time. So jump right into it. Find a good space and time where you're not going to be interrupted by life's events. And uh, just give yourself the comfort of not having the stress of other things around you um, uh, going on and you're having to stop to, to take care of something. It's uh, better if you give yourself and um, schedule some time um, that you're going to be just doing the things yourself. Um, now, give context, okay? We explain to our partner what we are about to do and why we have to do it. So make sure you're giving them the context of what this is all about, which is what they're trying to say here. And then also get consent. Make sure that when you approach somebody that you get them to, in fact, say, or say that they understand what you're doing and in here it's a life and death errand okay this is serious stuff uh, we're not it's not this 
it's serious. And uh, in, in almost all cases, most people are going to be honored um, and, um, and thrilled to help you and, and, and enjoy the fact that you trust them with the information that you're about to um, um, uh, disclose. Okay, Rob. We pocket our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. Once we have taken this step, withholding nothing, we are delighted. We can look the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. Our fears fall from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our creator. We may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. The feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. We feel we are on the broad highway, walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Sure. A lot of these, is, there's some promises in here. Um, and uh, we'll highlight a couple of things. Um, one I just want to overemphasize, or I can't overemphasize, is that you're going to pocket your pride and go to it, uh, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny of the past. This is the important part of, of the disclosing of this information to another person. You do not want to withhold uh, some of the things that are the most uncomfortable. It's when you get to that point when you're disclosing something that you're not really proud of, that you're uh, absolutely abhorrent about in some cases, um, that you disclose that because that is where you're going to find the humility that you're looking for in the, uh, in the process. Um, here's a promise. Once we have taken this step withholding nothing, we are delighted. Okay. And that means that's important. You're going to feel delighted, elated. You're going to have that weight off your shoulder. Um, and that's going to feel very, very good. Um, you want to be able to look the world in the eye. I mean, just do not um, uh, sit back and 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 um, um, not be right at this and go at this um, uh, with some zeal. Okay. Now uh, we may have had certain spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. Right now, something's happening. The fact that you're disclosing this, the information that you're sharing with another person, the delight that you're feeling from all of that is what we're talking about when you're going to have some level, some portion of a spiritual experience, all right? It is enlightening like nobody's business. And we're not talking about just the fact that you you know, in traffic decided to flip somebody off and, and uh, because you had a resentment that they cut you off in traffic and that type of thing. I mean, we certainly you want to reveal things like that, but we're talking about those really deep seated things that you have been withholding from others for a long time. And those resentments that you've had that you really want to get out there. And then that's the point and where you're kind of going, my gosh, it doesn't, it's not as bad as I think it, or I thought it was because I'm able to talk about it to a, somebody else. You've disclosed this information and, and it's that feeling you're going to get from doing so. All right. Um, so the feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. This is an important part. This, the, 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 it's, it's all... All of this is part of a recipe, if you will, and, and the more additives that you get into that recipe and the more you follow it to the letter, the more likely you're going to find that the feeling of not wanting to drink is going to disappear. And that is an important point to make, okay? Um, we feel that we are on the broad highway walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe, okay? This is very important to note. All right. And that's why it's so important to get your step five done um, and do it appropriately. Rob? As our friend Bill always says, tell me what you were not going to tell me. It's an important part. You know, we sometimes we try to hold back things. No. Tell me what you weren't going to tell me. Tell me your deepest, darkest secret so we can get rid of it. So we don't have to keep it inside anymore. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. We thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know him better. Taking this book down from our shelf, 
we turn to the page which contains the 12 steps. Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask if we have admitted to anything where we're building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work solid so far? Are the stones properly in place? Have we skimped on cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? Okay, couple of really important things here in this paragraph. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we had done. I have heard story after story about people that will find that it's one of the most calming hours that they've ever felt in, in, in a long time. Um, in fact, uh, people have found that that very evening or night that they sleep, they have slept better than they've slept in a long time. And to a person that I have heard tell the story about this, they can tell you, they will tell you that there is definitely a change in what they are feeling and experiencing after going through something like this. Okay, we thank God from the bottom of our heart. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a prayer, just, you know, a, a light prayer, very simple, you know, thank you uh, and to your higher power um, and, uh, and, and, and just share a moment with, with your higher power. Um, taking the book down, we turn to the, uh, the page, which is page 59. Um, it contains the 12 steps. Uh, we're carefully reading the first five proposals, and we ask if we have omitted anything. And this is a good reconciliation time frame for you to sit down and kind of think, did I miss something here? What you're basically doing is having completed your first five steps, you want to make sure that you can honestly look at those five steps and say that you actually completed them and you did it with everything you had. You put in 100% of all of you into each of those steps and got to the point that you are right now after having that, that experience and spending that hour of quietness and, uh, and contemplation uh, with regard to yourself. All right. On page 59, it says, half measures availed us nothing. Absolutely. Did we, do an, did we do an honest job? And that's what we're reviewing. We're going from an instinctual base to a, to a spiritual base life. Beautiful. Right. And, and let's talk just a little bit. And Rob, you're absolutely right. Let's talk a little bit about the stones. Um, the, it's, a, it's an important, distinct, important thing here. One of the things that the Keystone Group actually does, in fact, have some, some work around. I won't steal Joe's uh, thunder. He does a very good job of talking about them. But I am going to go ahead and list um, um, the, uh, the, where the stones are at. And I know that um, Rob has already done that. That's on page 12. Um, and let's just take a, a little bit here and kind of look at those, okay, Rob, just to kind of give everybody the idea of what we're talking about here. Okay. Well, on page 12, they're going to talk about the foundation stone, or step one. Uh, on page 17, they're going to talk about the powerful cement. Uh, on page 47, they're going to talk about the cornerstone, which are step two, which forms the base. Uh, on page 62, they talk about the cornerstone, which is the center stone in the arch, which holds all the weight. Because remember, we're trying to walk through this archway. If we haven't done a proper job of setting all the stones, it can crumble. As we walk through it, we don't want the keystone falling on our heads. And that's the most important part is that, you know, all everything is done properly. You know, our first step, the cornerstone. Have we set it perfectly? Um, Bill, from what I understand that Bill's father uh, or somebody in Bill's life, Bill uh, from New Jersey can mention this maybe a little bit more, was a masonry, supposedly. And uh, so that's why a lot of the stones have been mentioned in the book. That's what I've been told anyways. And so that's why a lot of the terms that uh, Bill, Bill Wilson used were masonry terms you know is the cornerstone fixed properly okay the first stone when you're building a, a building has to be set perfectly perfectly level because if it isn't then the rest of the building is going to be off 
if we don't have the proper, you know, mixture of cement, there's going to be weaknesses in it, which means that, uh, well, think about, Art can probably tell you about Miami. There was a building not that long ago that actually fell apart, just crumbled, you know, um, you know, and of course people died because the whole building imploded within itself. No real reason uh, given other than it wasn't built properly. We don't want this happening in our lives. And so uh, that's what it's all about. On page 97, we are starting to talk about working with others. And that's a foundation stone of our recovery is working with others. So in page 75, we just talked about is the archway. As I said, or as, as Leo said, uh, Joe, who has a Sunday study, goes more in depth about the stones. Uh, you know, we put the page numbers there. So if you want to go and, and trace it back, by all means, or if you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to ask, you know, because we're, we're here to help as best we can. Leo, you have anything? No, that, that's that? perfect, Rob. You did exactly what I was looking for. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. So we're on page, top of page 76, everybody. If we can answer to our satisfaction, we then look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something, we will not let go. We ask God to help us be willing. All right. So a lot of things to talk about in this particular paragraph. First of all, it's if we can answer to our satisfaction, we then look at step six. So right now we're just in the preparatory phase of going to our step six. We're not actually doing step six at this, at this moment. When we talk about answering to our satisfaction, um, there, what we're talking about are those resentments, those fears, the conduct and the harms, all right? And to our satisfaction, I, 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 I wrote a note here, our strong satisfaction. It has to be uh, without reproach that we are absolutely satisfied that we have uh, uh, answered um, the uh, step five, resentment, fears, conduct, and harms. And what I'm, I've, I've circled, look at step six because again i want to say that we're just now taking a look at it and we're in a preparatory phase before doing our step six and the key to this step is willingness all right so i highlighted and underlined willingness and i put in there that this is the key to this step as being indispensable all right now be honest this is a very strong uh, thing that has to happen here is being honest and are we now ready to let God, your higher power, remove from us all the things, the defects of character, okay? The defects of character, which we have admitted are objectionable, okay? Can he now take them all, every one? If we let go of everything that is a problem for us, every defect of character, if we still still cling to something, we will not let go. We ask for our higher power for help um, to help us be willing to do so. All right. That's an important piece as well. Some, but something's going to pop up, something you're going to cling to, something you're going to hold on to. You're going to be very it's going to be hard to let go of it. Um, and, and you want to basically have that that personal and private conversation with your higher power and find if they were, uh, if um, um, ask our higher power to help us be willing to let that go. Rob? Yeah, and remember, we have just finished doing our step five. Okay, we have been home for an hour, we've rested, we've now picked up the book and we're now reading. Okay, that's why it talks about at night. Okay. Well, well, as we go further on in the book, but right now we have just finished our step five and we're reading the book now. When ready, we say something like this, my creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. 
Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have then completed step seven. All right. So in the process here, we've prepped ourselves for step six. We basically ask uh, uh, and we're willing to let go of all of those defects of characters we talked about, take them all. And as we do so, then we have then said our step seven, seventh step prayer. I am now willing that since my creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. All right. And um, there's, there's, there's some important points here that are that the enlightenment that happens here, again, this is first and foremost, you are willing to let go of all things uh, that are objectionable. And then you ask um, um, the, your, your higher power um, to take all of you, good and bad, all right? And, and these steps are pretty quick. Step six and step seven happen within just a few minutes of each other. Um, and, and it's really more in that reflection that contemplation and uh, almost to a point of um, um, uh, meditating uh, with regard to just kind of finding yourself being in an absolute quiet place, very much private and personal and, and all with nothing else going on around you um, and, and having that clear uh, distinction and a clear mind as to what you're attempting to do at that point and then doing it, all right? That is going to be the, the, uh, the important piece here. And all of a sudden now you've done step six and step seven, all within a couple of minutes, and we're ready to move to the next step. Rob? Now we need more action, without yeah. which we find that faith without works is dead. Let's look at steps eight and nine. We have a list of all persons we have harmed and to whom we're willing to make amends. We made it when we took inventory. We subjected ourselves to a drastic self-appraisal. Now we go out to our fellows and repair the damage done in the past. We attempt to sweep away the debris which has accumulated out of our effort to live on self-will and run the show ourselves. If we haven't the will to do this, we ask until it comes. Remember, it was agreed at the beginning we would go to any length for victory over alcohol. Okay, so we are at step nine, eight and nine. We're examining that now. Um, I, some of the things I think that are important here with regard to step eight, we're talking about making a list of those people that we've harmed. When I first started doing this, we, um, uh, I started making a list of everybody that was on um, my step four, okay? Everybody on that list, okay? There's now where you need to be a bit... Um, uh, you've, you've got to kind of decide who you've actually harmed and who you really, you, you know, you've had a, a disagreement with or an argument with, but you haven't necessarily harmed them. All right. So I want to make sure that this, that your step eight list probably, probably will be shorter than the, the step four uh, list of resentments to all the people that you've had resentments for. And I'll bring up another example again. I know that this was, I, I put this down, but in essence, it really wasn't correct, even though I still have a resentment. And again, this goes all the way back to third grade. And we're not talking about going back to third grade, but it popped up. I, I, I clung to it. And so I put it down and just to get it out of my head. But I can promise you, I am not going to go and try and find Todd Porter of all the Todd Porters in the world and try and call this guy up and, and, a, and, and talk about the fact that he had stolen a couple of little tires off of a race car that I had that was a little slot car uh, race car that I had brought to school and, uh, and he flaunted those little tires and I, I couldn't even get the, the teacher at the time to help me with this. So it was something that I just popped back in my head. I had this resentment. I stuck, okay, I still have a resentment, but it is fleeting. I can tell you this. So 
I am not putting Todd Porter on my step eight list, okay? I am talking about people that you've truly harmed. Somebody like a spouse, a, a family member, um, a couple of your, your former and or current best friends, the people that you've literally done something that has caused harm to that person so that they are now in a situation where they're a little bit timid, they're a little bit uh, reserved, or something is going on with regard to you. Um, you know, examples that are like your, your, your sons or daughters, uh, your brothers, sisters, um, somebody that maybe you've seen a lot, maybe you go to a, uh, a particular store and you've gotten really into uh, not liking a particular person behind the counter and day in and day out or weekend and week out, you find yourself in front of this person and you have literally said things that you now regret saying and you wanna try and make amends, all right? That's the kind of thing we're looking for. So when you make that list, make sure that you're not including your Todd Porters, all right? That's not what we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> because after all, I'm pro if I was, let's just hypothetically say I found the right Todd Porter, chances are the person's not, e he's not even gonna remember what I'm talking about. It probably didn't affect him in the way that it affected me. So that's gonna be something that you kind of wanna work through let go of you know the people that you may have just had a moment's interaction with and then it was gone and they are gone and nothing else will ever come of it um, please make sure that that's what you're looking for all right so that's the first thing um, and go out to our fellows and repair the damage done in the past and um, um, We'll, we'll, we'll look at some of these things, but um, um, you, part of this too is you want to, um, making amends also doesn't mean that you're going to start your step nine with an apology. You don't know if that's what this person may or may not want. So it's always good to start with talking about the situation that you're trying to, 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 uh, to make an amend for and then asking that person what it is you can do to make amends. Maybe it is you pay me back that the money you owe me that you haven't paid for so many years. Maybe it's um, nothing. Maybe they say it's simply just an apology would be nice. At that point, make a genuine and sincere, and sincere apology. But sometimes jumping out there in the beginning and, and, and apologizing, it may not be what they want. So this isn't about calling up uh, your, your son or daughter and saying, first of all, I'm sorry for what I did. Okay, hang on just a minute. You know, talk about what you're talking about and then ask them what it is that you can do to make amends. Um, and remember, if they ask you to do some things that take some energy and effort, you're there and you're going to do whatever it takes to, to do that within reason. All right. Now, again, we're not talking about somebody making some bombastic request of you to do something that is going to be, you know, potentially harmful to yourself uh, in some manner or fashion. The fact is we're not talking about those type of things either. So it's, uh, it's important uh, uh, that you do um, the, what they ask, but not to the extremes of some people, especially if they're still hurt and, uh, and they're lashing out back at you. Um, it's never a good idea to, uh, to go, like I said, you're going to do whatever you can that's reasonable um, in order to, to make that amend. Okay. Good Rob? point, Leo. Saying sorry is an apology. It's not an amend. An amend is restitution. Put things back the way they were. Correct a mistake to put things right, righting a wrong. Bill from New Jersey always has a great analogy about an amend. If I'm driving my car and I take out your fence, me coming, knocking on your door going, hey, I'm sorry, I took out your fence and me getting back in my car and leaving doesn't fix the fence. 
I have to fix your fence. Whether I get my hammer and nails out and put the fence back together, or I hire, have to hire somebody to put that fence back, that is the amends or the restitution. So I just wanted to throw that in. No, that's a good one, Rob. That's a good example. Probably there are still some misgiving. As we look over the list of business acquaintances and friends we have heard, we may feel diffident about going to some of them on a spiritual basis. Let us be reassured that some people we need not and probably should not emphasize the spiritual feature on our first approach. Okay. Okay. So a couple of things. Um, I think we're probably, we're going to cut right there and then continue on. Um, the, uh, the definition of diffident, just so that everybody has it, is a modest or shy, is modest or shy because of a lack of self-confidence. So if we feel uh, modest or shy uh, because of a lack of, of self-confidence about going to some of them on a spiritual basis, let us be assured to some people we, we need not and probably should not emphasize the spiritual feature on our first approach. Again, maybe it's like the Rob's example of, of, of hitting somebody's fence with your car and damaging the fence. You, you know exactly what the harm is. You know exactly what needs to be done uh, based on what they say to you, which is more than likely, I want you to fix my fence. Um, it's probably not necessary that you go into the spiritual nature of the reason why you're walking up to their door and telling them that you're the one that damaged their fence and you would like to uh, do whatever, it, whatever they would like for you to do to make things right. Um, so that's kind of a distinction that we want to do there. Um, Rob? Yeah, we're going, we're at the top of page 77, everybody. And, uh, there is a line in here that, uh, is one of the most, uh, incredible lines that is written in this book to me. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, here we go. We might prejudice them. At the moment, we are trying to put our, our lives in order, but this is not an end in itself. Our real purpose is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God and the people about us. It is seldom wise to approach an individual who still smarts from our injustice to him and announce that we have gone religious. In the prize ring, this would be called leading with the chin. We lay ourselves open to being branded fanatics or religious bores. We may kill a future opportunity to carry a beneficial message, but a man is sure to be impressed with a sincere desire to set right the wrong. He is going to be more interested in a demonstration of goodwill than in our talk of spiritual discoveries. Yeah, and the sentence I'm sure that Rob is talking about that's written in here is this, and it's, I've both highlighted and underlined it. It is... Our real purpose is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service to God or your higher power and to the people about us. It is seldom wise to approach an individual who still smarts from injustice to him who announced that we have gone religious. Okay, so I think we're kind of getting the point that we're trying to make here with regard to uh, uh, leading with kind of your spiritual experience and that type of thing. I think that it does kind of go into it and uh, clearly and clearly says this, but our man is sure to be impressed with a sincere desire to set right the wrong. Okay, so if you're focused on this person, so you're focused on the person you've harmed, all right, you're going to earn um, the right to advance. I mean, you're going to persuade them through involvement, okay, and that is going to be that you're going to set right the wrong and you're going to earn the right to advance, um, and it's going to be more interested in a demonstration of goodwill than in our talk of spiritual discoveries, you're going to make this person feel better uh, by making the correct and, uh, and, and uh, respectful amend, okay? And in doing so, you're going to mend uh, um, this harm, this fear, this, the conduct that you... Um, you may have demonstrated you're gonna you're gonna mend that and that is going to help you get to a point where either you're now on speaking terms with this person you've maybe rekindled a friendship or uh, uh, you've strengthened a relationship or maybe you never talk to this person again but this person doesn't hold you in ill regard anymore they have now 
got a good uh, uh, impression of you and, uh, and they're feeling better, you're feeling better and everything is better and, you can, and you're able to just move on and that is no longer hanging over your head or, or, or hiding in one of those dark corners uh, of, your, of your psyche. Rob? Our, and you hit the nail on the head. Our real purpose is to fit ourselves to be of maximum service. To fit ourselves takes effort and humility on our parts. Bruce Lee had a great quote that he talked about, and he said, be like water. When water is poured into a cup, it takes the shape of the cup. When it is poured into a bowl, it takes the shape of the bowl. We have to fit ourselves. So that takes effort on our part and humility. You know, as I say, it's one of the, the, the most striking comments or, or things that come out of the book. Is there a step 12? How do we help others? Well, we have to fit ourselves to help other people. Page 77, everybody. We don't use this as an excuse for shying away from the subject of God. When it will serve any good purpose, we are willing to announce our convictions with tact and common sense. The question of how to approach the man we hated will arise. It may be he has done us more harm than we have done him. And though we may have acquired a better attitude towards him, we are still not too keen about admitting our faults. Nevertheless, with the person we dislike, we take the bit in our teeth. It is harder to go to an enemy than to a friend, but we find it much more beneficial to us. We go to him in a helpful and forgiving spirit, confessing our former ill feeling and expressing our re regret. Okay, I'm going to repeat that last sentence because it's important. We go to him in a helpful and forgiving spirit, confessing our former ill feeling and expressing our regret. Okay, very, very important kind of uh, thing here. How do I go to somebody and what do I say? This is an excellent sentence to, to kind of take to heart and give you some guidance as to how you might approach uh, someone. Um, there is um, a, a point where you may want to talk about your higher power. And I'm gonna say in most cases, you may not. It's, it's really gonna be uh, very, uh, it's gonna be specific to the situation that you're facing at that moment. Uh, and, this, and the decision whether or not to talk about your higher power is going to be beneficial or not, okay? Um, so, when you're when you're trying to decide uh, how you're going to approach a person in your step nine, you're going to be uh, reflecting and you're going to be asking your higher power for that guidance. All right, and that's really what they're trying to say here, is that um, uh, you're going to be looking for your higher power uh, for guidance on how to approach this person, which typically. And, and we're not exactly there yet, but I'm going to give you a, a spoiler alert here. And that is, is that we don't do our step nine when it is our step nine on the list. We will not do our step nine. And this is important because a lot of people go, well, when do I do my step nine? Well, you do it when you're doing your step 11. So at, at, uh, at night, you're asking if there's anything that you could have done better in the morning, you're saying, what is it I can do to make today uh, a good day? And if you're uh, at the point of approaching one of your amends, that's where you're going to be asking for that guidance. And, uh, and it's important to note that um, we're going to get all the way to our step 11 um, before we actually begin our step nine. And you're going to find that you're in a much better frame of mind uh, to do your step nine by waiting until you're at your step 11, all right? Couple of, and, and we'll cover that in some detail as we get going forward, but I wanted to go ahead and make that distinction now. Rob? Under no condition do we criticize such a person or argue. Simply, we tell them that we will never get over drinking until we have done our utmost to straighten out the past. We are there to sweep off our side of the street, realizing that nothing worthwhile can be accomplished until we do so. Never trying to tell him what he should do. His faults are not discussed. We stick to our own. If our manner is calm, frank, and open, we'll be gratified with the results. Right. So really the important thing here is, is that um, um, never trying to tell him what he should do. 
This is going to be the part that is going to probably get you in the most, it's going to be the most difficult thing. And that is, is that you do not want to point that finger at that person for any reason whatsoever. You're not there to correct their wrongs. You're not there to expose their wrongs and try and get them to make an amend. You're there to talk about your part and only your part and the amend you're gonna make for that. His faults are not discussed, period. They are just not there and we stick to our own. Can't overemphasize that enough. I've highlighted and underlined both of those sentences. And if our manner is calm, frank, and open, we will be gratified with the result. Okay. And this is another note I put in here. I'm going to behave because it's the right thing to do. The last thing you want to do is find somebody that you have a resentment for, get them on the phone or get them face to face and dig everything all back up and get this whole thing back into a, uh, the volume turned up, get everything raw again. And now what you've done is just dug your hole even deeper. Okay. Important thing to do. You behave because it's the right thing to do. And his faults are not discussed. We stick to our own. That's important to get out of this last bit, this paragraph here. Rob? In nine cases out of 10, the unexpected happens. Sometimes the man we are calling upon admits his own fault. So feuds of years standing melt away in an hour. Rarely do we fail to make satisfactory progress. Our former enemies sometimes praise what we are doing and wish us well. Occasionally, they will offer assistance. It should not matter, however, if someone does throw us out of his office. We have made our demonstration, done our part. It's water over the dam. Sure. So important things here is, is that now we're talking about the potential reaction you're going to get from the person you're trying to make the amend to. So in, in a lot of cases, you're going to get this smile on their face. They're going to be gratified. Uh, there's going to be gratification there for you that you have made the, the amend. They're going to be happy and that'll be that. In some cases, they're going to say, you know what, I appreciate you coming to me. I'm going to help you with this. Maybe it's, an, uh, maybe it's fixing that fence. You know, Leo, if you go out and get uh, the materials and you bring your tools, I will offer up, you know, uh, the assistance. I'll get out there on Saturday with you and we'll fix this fence together. And, and, and that in and of itself is exactly what you're looking for. That, you couldn't have asked for an amend to, to go any better than that, okay? And um, um, on the flip side, somebody may hang up on you. They may been face-to-face, -face, turn around and say, I, I don't wanna see you, I don't wanna hear from you. I'm done with this. I've, you know, the the harms <clears throat> you can never fix and walk away. All right, you have done your part. Okay, that's the important thing. You're going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to be awkward. You're going to be feeling a little bit of that. Probably the anger may start to rise up. You know, some of those resentments are going to get uh, reinforced and that type of thing. But nonetheless, you need to be able to let go of all of that and know that you reached out to this person and you honestly and sincerely tried to make the amend that you needed to make. If they are not going to receive that amend, it is not on you um, to continue to pursue that and, 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 get, and, and, and get them to do something they're not gonna do. If they're not gonna do it, you have done your part and you can check that person's name off and you can move on. At least you did an honest and sincere effort to try to make that amend. Rob? Leo, I just want to go back to page 25 for one second. Sure. Where it said in the squiggly writing, so we know it was important. There is a solution. Almost none of us like the self-searching, the leveling of our pride, the confession of shortcoming, which the process requires for its successful consummation. But we saw that it really worked in others, and we had come to believe in the hopelessness and futility of life as we have been living it. So I just want to bring that point back up. Yep, it's a good one. It's very good, and it's very applicable to what we're reading right now. In nine cases out of 10, the unexpected happens. Did I read this part? Not yet. Okay, thank you. Sometimes the man we're calling upon admits his own fault, so feuds of years standing melt away in an hour. 
Rarely do we fail to make satisfactory progress. Our former enemies sometimes praise what we are doing and wish us well. Occasionally, they will offer assistance. It should, I did read this. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Most alcoholics <laughs> owe money. We do not dodge our creditors. Telling them what we are trying to do, we make no bones about our drinking. They usually know it anyway, whether we think so or not. Nor are we afraid of disclosing our alcoholism on the theory it may cause financial harm. Approached in this way, the most ruthless creditor will sometimes surprise us. Arranging the best deal we can, we let these people know we are sorry. Our drinking has made us slow to pay. We must lose our fear of creditors, no matter how far we have to go. For we are liable to drink if we are afraid to face them. Right. And so sometimes it is going to be that you're going to owe somebody money. The idea here is, is that you may owe them enough money that it's not going to be able to be done in one, one chunk. You may walk in and have a checkbook ready if you still use checkbooks. Um, and the idea being is, is that you might want to take at least a small chunk out of that, that amount of money that you want to, to pay back if that's what they're going to ask for. Um, more than likely, if you do owe money to somebody, that's what they're going to ask for in return is to have that money uh, paid back. In some cases, when we're talking about creditors and stuff, they're willing to potentially take less than what you totally owe, especially if you're contrite and sincere in, in your apology for owing the money, telling them the situation that you're in about your alcoholism and that you sincerely want to make amends here and you would like to, uh, to work out uh, something that is, uh, is uh, acceptable to both you and them so that uh, they can do that. And then when people are approached in this way, uh, the most ruthless creditor will sometimes surprise us. Okay, so that's the idea was I, that I was trying to make there is that you'd be surprised at how willing somebody is to potentially working out a payment plan at the very least and or reducing the amount that you might owe them. And, and, uh, and, and in some cases, and, Maybe, maybe not, but it's just, it's a potential is they wipe it clean and say, look, just the mere apology of coming back and talking to me, I, I let's just write it off and say, you know, you, 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 you've done good. Don't do it again. I see what you're doing. I appreciate what you're doing. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, the debt is satisfied. My gosh, can you imagine how you could feel going out of there saying that you probably owed somebody like $500? And it's been probably four or five years and they've moved on, you've moved on, and now you're coming back to uh, attempt to pay that money back. And they say, you know what, I've forgotten about it, but now that you talk about it, I know what, you're right, you do owe me that money. Let's just write it off and we're done and be done with it. Um, you know, what, a, what an, a, an elated feeling that you're going to have coming out of a meeting such as that. I mean, even if you do pay it back and they say, hey, pay me back in $50 increments every every two weeks on your payday, you know, or something like that. It's it's a great way to get out from under it. And after you've made that 10th payment and that $500 and stuff, how, how you're going to feel uh, going forward. Okay, we're kind of at the uh, at the time here where I'd like to have Bill uh, actually uh, jump in and say something. So uh, I'm going to stop there for the day and uh, ask Bill to uh, jump in and share with us. Hi, this is Bill, uh, alcoholic from New Jersey. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Leo and Rob, good job. Uh, there's, there's really a lot of good information in here uh, in this part of the book. Uh, we, we started off on uh, <clears throat> step five and uh, that basically uh, Bill's just telling us what, what we're supposed to do to go through step five. and. Uh, like was mentioned, there's, there was no sponsors at this time, but they did have people that they called spiritual advisors. And basically they were doing the same thing as a sponsor does. So the best thing to do with your step five with is with your spiritual advisor or with your sponsor, because those are the people that know the best about it. And Bill did give us some instructions in here. He said, you can use your family, but I think he was running out of suggestions when he, when he said to use your family, because I don't think that's a good idea because there's certain things that your family's not going to want to hear. And there's certain things that you're not going to want to tell to your family. And we're supposed to do this as quickly as we can on uh, page, 
page 75, it, it told us, uh, we, we pocket our pride illuminating the, the, every twist and character, every dark cranny of the past. We're supposed to do this right away, as quickly as we can. This has a shelf life. If we write this, if we do our, uh, get our fifth step ready after we write our fourth step, and then we stick it in a, in a shelf or something and don't do it for a number of months or whatever, it kind of wears off. Uh, and, and it tells us when we're going through this, it says we've begun to have a spiritual experience. So going through the fifth step, we start to have a spiritual experience. You're not going to complete the spiritual experience just by doing the fifth step. The fifth step, you begin the spiritual experience. And if you want to complete your spiritual experience, you have to complete the rest of the steps. That, that's the way this whole process works. Then, then he gets into uh, telling us uh, step, step uh, six and step seven. And uh, but basically, they're just one paragraph each. They, it's real simple. They, they, they take only a, a minute or two to do. It's not really hard. And, in step six, you, you look at it and make sure you did everything right. You answer to yourself with satisfaction that you've uh, covered everything you were supposed to cover. And then, then you go on to step seven and you just say the, say the step seven prayer. And that's basically it. It's not a real big involved thing doing six and seven. Six and seven are very simple. Then he moves us on into steps eight and nine. And he says, step eight, we already did when we took inventory. If you did... Uh, a good inventory, and you wrote everything down that you were supposed to, your eighth step list will be part of your fourth step. It will be the first column in your fourth step of all the people that are on there, the people you harm, or the people with the sex harms, or even people that you have resentments against. Because having a resentment against somebody is actually harming them. We're not supposed to do that. So you've got this list already made out, and it's a good idea to go over the list with your sponsor. Because there are some people that we can't make amends to. You know, sometimes it's better to leave sleeping dogs live. We don't want to stir up anything. And some people don't want to see us for whatever reason. So in some cases, it's better off to not make amends to somebody just because it might cause more trouble making amends. And we don't want to do that. We're not doing this to cause trouble. We're doing this to get out of trouble and to fix the troubles that we already had. Then he goes into step nine, and step nine basically is just telling us, well, he's going to give us a whole bunch of examples, eight examples in total on how we're supposed to make amends to different, different people. And that's not necessarily all the people that you may have to make amends to. You may have more than Bill has listed in here, but he's giving us examples to show us how to do it. And uh, like Rob mentioned about, about the fence, making amends is not saying you're sorry. Saying you're sorry is called an apology. That's an expression of regret or remorse for something that we did. Amends means to fix something that you did, to pay for it, to make restitution or compensation for it. So if I'm driving my car down the street and I crash into your fence, I don't stick my head out of the car and say, sorry, fence. That's not going to do anything. I have to fix that fence or I have to pay you whatever it costs to have it fixed. That's what amends means. Amends means to make compensation for what I did. And again, the best way to go through this is have your sponsor go through it with you and tell you what, you know, how you're supposed to do this and when you're supposed to do it. And a lot of people make little cards, little index cards, because they fit right in your top pocket and they're easy. And, and you can just put down uh, who you have to go make amends to and what you're going to say to them. And when you go make amends to people, remember, we're there to clean off our side of the street, not their side. If I'm cleaning off your side of the street, I'm not cleaning my side. My job is to clean my side of the street, irregardless of what they've done. So that's all I've got. Thanks a lot for letting me share. Thank you, Bill. That was excellent. Thanks, Bill. All right. We'll close things out with the serenity prayer, Rob. And then you open got it, up. it, my friend. The serenity prayer. God. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Thanks everybody for being here today.